Welcome back to the Decentralized Finance Lecture. My name is Arthur and today we're going to discuss lending and borrowing in DeFi. Lending is a fundamental construct in traditional finance as well as in DeFi and it's a truly exciting topic. Come on and jump in. So why is lending so important? Who is participating in lending? What are the different entities? Why does it matter? And what are the risks? So these are all the things that we're going to discuss in this lecture. And we're going to start with a very simple example. So here we have Bob. Bob is really passionate about music. He loves it so much. He wants to perform and create music all day long. But he has an issue. He cannot afford this really cool turntable that he would like to have in order to create very nice music. So one possible solution is that he finds someone, here Bart, that is a bit more senior, maybe has accumulated a little bit more wealth and uh, he can ask him to provide him a loan. So he can ask him, can you please give me uh, some cash such that I can purchase a, a turntable and I can create um, I can create value through your investment, through your, your loan. Right? So it's really this recurring process where an entity is required or needs upfront cash that it can't afford yet in order to produce um, ideally positive value for other people and then can generate a positive cash flow. And this is fundamentally how the economic machine works. So I can really recommend you going here to Ray Dalio's um, video on YouTube of uh, that explains in, in a brief 30 minutes how the economic machine works. It's a beautiful video which basically lays out that we have a we have an assumed productivity productivity growth over time. Um, we do have short term debt cycles and we do have longer term debt cycles. Um, and all these three cycles, if you overpose them, then it's basically this kind of a structure over time. And on the y axis here, you have to the growth in terms of GDP um, that shows you how the economic machine works. Now you might notice like these bigger cycles here, they're often referred to as crashes, right, of the financial um, economy. Um, however, you can also find that there are some smaller crashes here because where overall, um, overall the, the entire system is, is really cycle-based. Sometimes people need more money, sometimes they need less money. Um, and this is how, how the, on a very high level, the economic, economic machine works. So lending and borrowing really is fundamental in this construct. And whenever there's a, there's a correction like here, or even smaller corrections here, this is where the borrower, so for example, in our previous example, the younger person who lent money needs to pay money back to the lender uh, for the for the debt that it uh, accumulated early on. So, like in essence, what you what you can remember is that lending allows you for you know, within a short uh, within a short time frame to instantaneously gain more capital. And this capital, you can be used in order to produce hopefully positive goods, right? Naturally, if it's being used for uh, unproductive use, then you will pay a higher price back on later because you can't pay back your debt and uh, you may go bankrupt, uh, you, you get liquidated, etc. These are topics that we discuss in this lecture as well. Very well, so let's look at the on-chain lending and borrowing system architecture. So you can see the following entities here. We have a lender, we have a borrower, we have a liquidator, and we have a price oracle as well as a vault. Let's start at the vault. So the vault here is a smart contract that manages financial assets among these different entities. And again, right, the blockchain is great at managing assets without a trusted intermediary, and that's exactly what's happening here. So the vault is taking on various tokens, whether fungible or non-fungible, doesn't really matter. And for the sake of this example here, we have a few stable coins representing US dollars. So what the lender typically does is uh, he first needs to deposit a principal, right? So this is the lender, he has a surplus of capital and he would like this capital to work for him or her. So the idea is that this capital generates some interests. For the capital to generate interest, there needs to be a borrower who in a first step collateralizes 
uh, a certain security deposit such that the borrower can then take on a loan. For example, in some blockchain-based uh, protocols, you need to collateralize 150% of the value that you want to borrow afterwards, right? So MakerDAO is a, is a famous example. So once the borrower collateralized something, he can then borrow the assets, right? So, and then he effectively, if he, for example, uh, collateralized something, then he borrowed something. So the sum of his total assets are now uh, bigger than before. Right? So the, the danger, however, is that he might get liquidated. So let's discuss how the liquidation uh, process works. So this is the risk in lending and borrowing. So in, a, in essence, if this collateral here, if the value of this collateral drops below a certain value, right? If it's less than 150%, for instance, then uh, price oracles will update the on-chain prices or the reported prices of the collateral assets. And if these drop below a certain threshold, which we'll discuss later, then liquidators are incentivized to issue a liquidation request to the vault. And the liquidators are incentivized to do so because they receive a percentage uh, or they receive a discount basically at the, uh, of this collateral that they can purchase, and which is basically incentivizing them to participate in this particular, in this particular uh, protocol. So this is really the, just a high level uh, overview. We will go into more details in the following slides. Um, but just to give you a hint of how these different actors are actually working together and playing along. So from a high level perspective, I would like you to think now, what is the difference between on-chain lending and borrowing and between real world lending and borrowing? So if you go to your bank, for instance, how is this process, how does this work, this, this lending and borrowing? Um, what are the rules, etc.? So think about it for a few seconds, pause the video maybe, and then we can resume. Okay, so I think some of the most interesting changes are that at the moment, at this point in time at least, we cannot collateralize real world assets, right? So if you do have a home or something that you want to collateralize, you currently don't have, or hope, hopefully soon at least, but currently don't have the option to collateralize this as a, as a security, right? So this is one of the drawbacks, I'd say, that uh, that um, that traditional finance is, is is having an advantage that you cannot collateralize. The other the other difference is that um, if there's a debt default, right, um, you cannot uh, the, or the blockchain this vault here, he cannot like source, for example, your revenue from your income, right. So there's no legal framework that's attached. So everything is really happening in this vault in this framework and it's it's not confined to i mean it's basically confined to this particular blockchain database um, but it cannot capture real world events such as your your salary or your income uh, finally there are several regulations out there that limit you in your ability to take on debt in general or leverage um, and these are not in place in DeFi. In DeFi, it's currently totally un unregulated how much you lend or borrow, uh, which which gives you obviously a lot of freedom. But you also must exercise caution to not um, to not uh, basically become the victim of excessive losses. Just to give you like a few uh, images of. Uh, DeFi projects that, that allow you to perform lending and borrowing where you can become each lender or borrower. So just to give you an example here, this is Aave for instance. So you have a certain deposit APY as a lender. Um, here this is curve that we discussed earlier. This is here, this is uh, Alpha Homora as we also discussed earlier. So whenever you take on debt, right, you, you exercise a multiplier. So you have a certain leverage. Um, the leverage can be set, there are various multiply parameters. So typically, as long as you're over collateralized, you don't go beyond 2x in leverage. And if you're under collateralized, you can go beyond 2x leverage. So some centralized exchanges at least offer up to 100x, I believe, on chain. So far, as far as we've seen, you don't get more than 7x leverage. And uh, I challenge you to create a DeFi protocol where you can do a 50x, 50x leverage. 
I hope this gave you a very first good introduction of what lending and borrowing looks like on the blockchain. In the following, we'll discuss and dive deeper into the various specificities of on-chain lending.